Welcome back to Sport on 7. I'm Tom Bushell and we're in the middle of 30 minutes of sports for you. You can get me on Twitter, don't forget, at Tom Bushell UAE. All the news done, let's start to look forward to a super period for golf. We have the Ryder Cup coming up towards the end of the month and in November the race to Dubai culminates at Earth for the DP World Tour Championship Dubai. I've been at Earth chatting to Wayne Johnson, Director of Instruction at Jumeirah Golf Estates about what we have to look forward to. The Ryder Cup began in 1927, happening every two years, swapping between courses in the USA and Europe. It has become one of the best team events in the world. The 2012 Ryder Cup takes place between the 28th and the 30th of September at the Medina Country Club in Chicago. And I thought it best to get out to one of the best courses in Dubai to chat about the massive golfing events we have coming up. And you find us here on the sixth hole of the Earth Course here at Jumeirah Golf Estates and with Wayne Johnson, Director of Instruction here. A fabulous course, of course, and we're looking forward, aren't we, again to the DP World Tour Championship happening in a couple of months. But the Ryder Cup, first of all. Yeah, the Ryder Cup, fantastic, really exciting, probably one of the greatest team events that, that there is now on the planet. And uh, Team Europe looking very strong. It's going to be a great event. From Team Europe, let's concentrate on them, first of all. But which, which plays from that side? And the ones to watch out for? Well, the, the man in form right now, Rory, Rory McIlroy. What a great player. What a great ambassador for the game. Rory's playing fantastically well. He's won three times in the States this year. Is the deserving world number one, two-time major champion. Rory's going to be formidable in the tournament. We've got great players. Lee Westwood's in there, former number one. Luke Donald, you know. So, And I think the, the, the rookie, Nicholas Colsarts, I think we could see a lot from Nicholas. He's a big hitter. Medina suits the big hitters. So I think it's going to play really well for the European team. The Ryder Cup, of course, is going to be such a great occasion, isn't it? And lots of people in Dubai who love their golf are going to be watching it. But are there any plays the European side may have missed out on in terms of who they're not taking? I think really the picks were really good. Picking Polter, Colsarts was probably the right picks. They're, they're informed players. They've done really well all season. You could argue Padraig Harrington could have had a, a look in there because Padraig being a great player, three-time major champion. But I think the team's a really good balance. Olava Bals picked a really good team. He's a great captain and he's got some great vice captains, Darren Clark, Thomas Bjorn, you know, great vice captains there, Paul McGinley as well. And, you know, Sergio played his way into the team and I think Sergio's going to be a formidable player as well. So Europe are looking strong, of course, with Rory McIlroy firing on all cylinders. It's hard not to take them seriously. But the USA have failed to win four of the last five events and playing on a course they know well. They will be hoping to change that trend in 2012. And now we find ourselves on the 10th hole at the Earth Course here. And let's talk about Team USA for the Ryder Cup then, because, of course, Big names. Tiger Woods is a man firing once again this year. Uh, second in the money list on the PGA Tour. He's a real asset for Team USA, isn't he? Oh, fantastic. Great player. Had a great season so far this year. He's really regained his form. Tiger will be a great player and he's a great match player. And I think he's going to really be the... He's going to be the catalyst for the American team. I think if Tiger's on form, if Tiger's really in, really wants it, I think the US team will, will play really well and they'll, they'll thrive on a good Tiger Woods performance. And Davis Love the third announced his wild cards just the other day. Uh, one of those wild cards was Brant Snedeker, of course, who, who, who won the Farmers Insurance earlier on this year. He's having a decent year, and he had a good first couple of rounds at the British Open as well. He played well at the Open, uh, fell away a little bit in the last round, but he's a great player. I think anyone in the teams is a great player. I think the interesting thing for Davis was he had, he had a, a wealth of riches. He had sort of eight players to pick four places for. You've got to feel a little uh, unlucky. Hunter Mahan finished ninth in the Order of Merit in the States there. Unfortunate not to get a pick. He went with experience in Steve Stricker, uh, Jim Furyk, really seasoned campaigners, and probably felt that the balance with those two guys in the team would really you know, help in pairings with Tiger Woods. You've got Phil Mickelson in that team, really great player as well. So the Americans are strong. You know, Medina, long course, it's going to uh, play to them. Chicago, great sports town. It's going to be loud in the USA. So it'll be a great event. Davis loved the third, I think, just the other day, was saying how he needed hot putters. But let's not forget that Brant Seneca on a practice round of the British Open, hold a driver from 336 yards or so. I mean, amazing. 
are incredible. And, and you know, as I say, a talented player. You know, you, we've probably not seen the best of him just yet. I think he's one of these players that's just lacking in a little bit of confidence. And I think the U, the, the Ryder Cup is a great motivator. And, um, you know, the American boys will be up for it. They don't want to lose again. I mean, Europe have won five of the last, or four of the last five events, six of the last eight. So the Americans really don't want to lose that event in their home country. So it'll be a great, great time. And, and Snedeker is, is having his, his debut Ryder Cup, is, isn't he? Yeah, is that going to be an issue or do people take that, you know, these kind of players take it in their stride? Well, they, they're they great athletes and, and they've played at the highest level. However, playing in a Ryder Cup is a real nerve-wracking experience. Once they get on that first tee, it's a really special event. Snedeker's going to have a lot of the, you know, the older guard are going to try and help him along and coach coach him a little bit in how to what the expectations are. Um, I think he'll do well. I think, you know, that's the, the balance there with Furyk and Stricker. He's brought those guys in to sort of help his rookies along. And, you know, the Americans have got a, quite a few rookies in that team. But, you know, Mickelson Woods there, stalwarts of the team. So it's going to be really interesting. In the history of the Ryder Cup, the USA have won 428 matches, whilst Europe have taken 321. Nick Faldo, Paul Casey and Howard Clark have all managed hole-in-ones at the Ryder Cup in the past. And whilst Brant Snedeker may fancy his chances, there's no denying Medina is long. We now find ourselves on the 14th uh, here at the Earth Course, which is 550 yards uh, long. And there is a reason for telling you that, because the Ryder Cup at Medina in Chicago, it's a long course, isn't it? And it's going uh, to suit the big hitters. Extremely long. It's going to be set up pretty tight. The Americans have the preference in how they want the course set up. One of Davis's wildcard picks, Dustin Johnson, extremely big hitter of the ball. So I think that was a really strategic pick with, with Dustin. On the European side, Colsart's one of the longest hitters out there in the, in the game, in the world there. So you've got two really big hitters. It's going to be a course that Tiger really likes. He's had great success there in his professional career. So he's going to be one of the guys that really knows the course well. The American team have probably gone out there practicing a little bit earlier. They want this bad this year, so so they're going to be working hard to get that trophy back. Luke Donald, of course, lives in Chicago, so he'll know the course well, but he's not a big hitter, is he? So how, how will he cope around the course? How will he work it? Well, Luke knows that course really well. He went to college in Chicago, went to Northwestern. He was All-American champion when he was in college, and uh, he's played many rounds at that course. Even as a hitter that's not as long as the big hitters out there, Luke's greatest asset is his accuracy. So he hits it straight off the tee, these courses are going to be set up where the rough will be quite penal, so it's going to favour a straighter hitter as well, someone who keeps it in play. The long hitters get the advantage distance, however, if they're off the fairway, that second shot's going to be even that more tricky. OK, so as we approach the Ryder Cup, who do you think is going to take it? You say the USA really are up for it this year, but who do you think are going to take it, Team USA or Europe? All the past Ryder Cups have been incredibly close. The teams are so well balanced. My heart really feels for, um, I've got to say, the Europeans. I see McElroy leading them out on the last day, and I think you're going to find that one of the great players, you know, they're, they're going to close it out. I think Paul Laurie's going to close it out for the Europeans. So the tip is Europe for the 2012 Ryder Cup. Whatever happens, it will be another fantastic event. Let's talk about the race to Dubai then. We can look forward to the best players from the European Tour seen out their season once again in November. So we've dealt with the Ryder Cup. Let's now turn our attention to the newly named DP World Tour Championship, which is happening here at the Earth Course towards the end of November. It's going to be once again an amazing tournament, the race to Dubai, of course, and... Can we look elsewhere to Rory McIlroy? I don't think we can, can we? Well, I think it would be very fitting for Rory to, to finish off the season winning the race to Dubai, the DP World Tour Championship. Without question, a, a genuine world number one. There were always questions about Luke and, and Lee about never winning a major, but that's going to happen for those guys. But Rory, two major championships, deserving world number one. So, uh, you know, what a great end to the season, especially if we've got the Ryder Cup as well. And last year, of course, we were all talking about how Luke Donald was going for, for the, topping the, both the money lists on both sides of the Atlantic, which had never been done before officially. But Rory McIlroy is in that position right now, topping the PGA Tour money list and the European Tour money list as well. So it really is a strong year for him. Oh, yes. And I think uh, Rory's you know, he's looking set to really emulate Luke's great achievement from last year. If he wins the FedEx and wins the race to Dubai... With his major championship this year, what a career. I mean, that's a career in one year. I mean, fantastic. And uh, good luck to him. And I think we're going to see a lot of Rory, 23 years of age, really nice young man, phenomenal golfer. So he's really the next uh, 
you know, the next bright star on the on the European tour. And it's amazing, isn't it, really, to think that when Luke was making that record last year, we were all just amazing achievement, but one year later it could be done all over again. It just shows you the strength, I think, of the European tour. We've got some great players out there, lots of young guys coming up through the tour, the programmes now, the coaching, the training, the facilities, and, you know, the tour have done a great job and they're really bringing on these players. So here on the 18th green, this is where Roy McIlroy in a couple of months' time could well be picking up the Race to Dubai uh, trophy as well as, of course, the DP World Tour uh, Championship trophy as well. And this is the 18th. And if we just look down the fairway there, I mean, how, how do you play this hole? Big par five at the earth, of course. Big challenge uh, at the end of your round, but it's, it's a great hole. Great hole. It's a par five, as you said there, Tom, and it's over 600 yards long, so it plays very long. What happens during the course of the week? We move the tee boxes up sometimes or move them backwards so it gives the players the opportunity on two days to actually go for the green in two really only the big hitter can achieve this because as i say it's still playing over 500 yards when we move the boxes forward so strategy wise normal days the guys are playing to lay up with about 100 120 yards into the green really great distance for them to play their wedges into the green however when the tee boxes have moved forward a little bit the big hitters the McElroys, the kiroses those guys can try and have a go at the green in two maybe make an eagle make a total different change to the the results as it were it's a really unique hole as well isn't it of course because it's pretty much split in half with this creek right up the middle of the fairway yeah i think greg norman when he designed this i think the players really uh, you know they maybe say a few things about greg under the breath on the hole but great hole the creek runs straight at the middle you can play up the right hand side or the left hand side but most of the times as you're playing this hole the players come up the left hand side of this hole two shots into about 100 yards as we said and then approach playing from there it's a great hole to play, and just before it, of course, is the uh, the par three there uh, with the green uh, uh, as the island, which is a fantastic hole as well. Now, of course, uh, it was announced last year that three more years of the race to Dubai will be culminating here. It's now called the DP World Tour Championship, but it's going to be another amazing three years, isn't it? Oh, fantastic, and DP World, great sponsor. It's going to be a great event, bigger and better, lots of fun things to do for the family. It's going to be a great week, so anyone out there who wants to come up to the tournament, even if you're not a golfer, come along. It's a great family event, lots of fun, great things for the kids to do. And if you're a keen golfer, you're going to see some of the world's best players. Wayne, thank you very much. Tom, great to have you here, as always. Thank you. Looking forward to the tournament towards the end of November. Great stuff. US Open has meant it's been a massive two weeks in the world of tennis, of course, fancy yourself at Flushing Meadows next year. We can't promise you will be, but Sergio at Tennis 360 at Maydown will certainly help you out. Hi, uh, my name is Sergio and I'm one of the coaches with Tennis 360 here at the beautiful Maydown Tennis Academy. Okay, located next to the Maydown Hotel. And today, what we're going to do is, with the help of Gwen, we're going to go through the return of serve. We're going to do two versions, a basic version and then um, a more advanced version. Okay, Gwen is now in return position. Her feet are nice and wide. That should be one and a half times your shoulder width. Okay, so she's in really good position. She's got body, uh, body weight on, on her toes. Okay, she's leaning forward. Her racket, if you can see, she's in forehand position. Okay, so racket slightly off to that angle. Okay, now what she's going to do She's going to, the ball is going to come into her. She's going to do a split step, split step, okay? Then what she's going to do is what's called a power step. And she's going to bring her left foot across her body and she's going to take her racket back at the same time. Then as she does that, she's going to swing through and make out she's going to hit the ball. Split, then, and then swing, okay? The key to this is you have to have body weight forward into the shot, okay? You block the ball and hit cross court, okay? Very good, okay? The key though, when you return serve, you should always try to return serve across your body. Okay? Most people serve very hard, and it's key that the ball goes across your body because if you mistime the ball, which most of us do, it'll go down the line and it'll still go into the court. So that's the key for the return of serve. So now what we're going to do, we just went through the basic return of serve. Now we're gonna go through the more advanced return of serve, okay? A lot of the players, they use this type of return. What's going to happen now, Gwen is standing a little bit further back. She's going to take one step in, one step in, and she's going to split. And now the key, she's going to step across with a little step, okay, and then she's going to take her left foot across her body. And one step, split, little step, and then she's going to hit through. Okay, this creates a little bit momentum, more momentum through the shot. And with that little step off to the right there for the forehand return, gives you a little bit more stability and more reach as well. Okay, a little step across, 
Very good. Okay. So most, most people won't be aware of that little step across. Murray does this a lot in his matches. Okay. Step, little step across, hit through. Very good. Sport on 7 continues next. Chris McCarty from Sport360 joins me to chat about the biggest stories around local sport next. Alain in for an Aussie UAE start a new era under their new manager. And we look at the UAE at the London Paralympics as well. We're back in a moment on Sport on 7.